saygıdeğer konuklar, Belçika Balonya Kamu Hizmetleri Yollar ve Köprüler Onursal Direktörü Sayın Raymond Döbroy'u Beton Yolların Yapımı Başlıklı sunumu için kürsüye davet ediyorum. Okay. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. I first would like to thank a lot the organizers of this seminar the Turkish Ready Mix Concrete Association and especially Mr. Akaki for inviting me to give you a presentation about the construction of concrete roads. I will try to share with you a part of the Belgian experience in this field and also at the end to briefly speak about some international interesting practices. Be sure it's an honor and a pleasure to receive and to accept such, and such an invitation. Five points in the presentation. First, a short introduction. The design aspects with the two major types of concrete pavements. Construction practice, practices. Some particular issue related to design, construction and concrete mix, and to end some conclusions. I come from Belgium, capital Brussels, a small country in Europe, but uh, with a high density of population and an important road network. As you can see on the table, the concrete pavement is very present with its well-known advantages durability, low maintenance, provided, however, to be well designed and well built. Essentially, two kinds of road pavement in concrete. The jointed plane, concrete pavement, pavement, the main specification relate to the joints, toweled or not, but also, but more rarely, the steel reinforcement. The CRCP, the continuously reinforced concrete pavement, with a specification to control, to control the cracking pattern. The first time, the GPCP, or concrete slabs. This type of pavement consists of successive slabs whose lengths is limited to about 25 times the slab thickness. The movements as a result of fluctuation in temperature and humidity are concentrated in the joints. And normally these joints are sealed to prevent the water from penetrating the road structure. The main specification concerning the slab dimensions length, the width, and thickness. You see five meter long, doubled joints, and thickness more than 20 centimeter. Or five meter long, undoweled joints, and thickness lower than 20 centimeter. And the ratio length, width between one and 1.5. the slab twift lower than 5.50 meter. Crack inducers which extend to the depth of one third of the slab thickness are executed to avoid uncontrolled cracking, wide cracking of the concrete by shrinkage. Load pavement, load transfer, excuse me, load transfer is important to pavement longevity. Doubles bar, smooth coated steel bars provide a mechanical connection between slabs, but without restricting horizontal joint movement. They also keep slabs in horizontal and vertical alignment, and they avoid a pumping and faulting of the joints. 
the longitudinal joints now can be provided with tie bars, ripped steel. They play the role of load transfer and prevent opening of the joint between adjacent lanes. The tie bars are protected from corrosion in the central part. A plan with the sewing of joints must be realized in advance. It's very important. The plan of sewing has to take into account the equipment to concreting and the different phases of pavement realization. For the GPCP, normally, there is no need for reinforcement. However, steel reinforcement is sometimes necessary. In the upper part of the concrete, one third of the thickness to control the cracks, and the steel is, is interrupted at each joint. In the bottom part, for example, Reinforcement is the base as an insufficient capacity. Second type of concrete pavement, CRCP. CRC pavements are characterized by the absence of transverse joints and are equipped with longitudinal steel reinforcement, place of transverse reinforcement with anchor bar in already laid concrete. The diameter of the reinforcing bars is calculated in such a way that the cracking can be controlled and that the cracks are uniformly distributed, spacing one, two, one, two, three meters, and remaining very small, uh, less than 1.5 millimeters. And this, the principle of CRCP, are essentially absence of transverse joints, trim case controlled by longitudinal reinforcement, percentage of reinforcement, you see in Belgium 0 0.75, the pattern of finer cracks with an ideal distance between cracks and maximum cracks, 0 0.5 millimeters and the transverse reinforcement supporting the longitudinal reinforcement. You see the longitudinal steel, bars diameter 20 millimeters, space at 17 or 18 millimeters, 117, excuse me, <laughs> millimeters in millimeters. The transverse reinforcement, the bars are placed at an angle of 60 degrees to the longitudinal steel. Because when placed at a right angle, it is expected that the bars could be crack inducing and could then influence the crack pattern. The third point of the presentation, some important aspects of the construction practice. The road sub-base has to be prepared very carefully in order to realize anywhere a very strong road structure with an adequate and uniform thickness and without a possible post-compaction. And so the base must have a correct and uniform thickness efficiently and homogeneously compacted. Water drainage can be assured, removal of leaves and mud, and it for, for, it's forbidden to level with sand and, if possible, an extra width is always useful. The role of the asphalt layer or sandwich layer above the Lean concrete foundation is first of all in waterproofing and protecting the lean concrete from erosion. Also, enhancing the, the adhesions between the CRC and the base layer. Indeed, 
better distribution of tensile stresses in the CRC is achieved with the virtual disappearance of tensile stresses. With an asphalt layer on the base, the steel reinforcement can also be placed in a, in a very good condition at uh, the right level. The concrete mixing plant must have a sufficient capacity in order to be able to continuously supply concrete to the paving machines. The mixed constituents and admixtures have to be dosed very accurately. The number of aggregate feed bins has to equal at least the, num the number of different aggregate fractions. The equipment for loading the materials shall be in good condition and shall have sufficient capacity to be able to continuously feed the bins. Furthermore, it is useful and even essential to have a communication, a good communication system between the concrete mixing plant and the construction site in order to coordinate, coordinate the batching and, uh, and the paving operation. Sufficient trucks of high capacity must be available to continuously supply the paving machines. The number of trucks depends on the yield at the construction site, the loading capacity of the trucks, and the cycle time. Usually the specification prescribes that the concrete, uh, the concrete has to be transported in dump, dump trucks as paving concrete consists of a relatively dry mix having a consistency that makes transport and unloading in truck mixers difficult. Furthermore, the dump trucks can discharge the concrete faster. And the specification prescribed to cover the dump trucks to prevent the changes uh, uh, of the water content or changes in the temperature of the concrete during the transport. For small works and urban areas, the use of truck mixers is increasingly accepted because under these circumstances, an admixture, for example, super, uh, super plastifier can be mixed in just before discharging the concrete. All equipment necessary for executing the paving must be present on site and has to function properly. This concerns primarily manual needle vibrators and vibrating screen, equipment for, for floating the concrete surface, for applying the curing compound, for, for, compound, for sewing the joints, etc. Usually, the concrete is placed using slip foam paving machines, which applies for all categories of roads. However, the technique of manually placing the concrete using forms is still applied in certain cases, such as for the construction of roundabouts with a small diameter at intersections, for repair work, or when the execution conditions are such that slip, for, that slip from paver cannot be utilized. The finishing is completed using a hand float attached to a handle by a double inch. The second way to concreting with a slip foam paver. In addition to a slip foam paver, it is essential to have the following equipment available on the construction site. One or more manual needle vibrators to compact the concrete along the transverse or longitudinal construction joints. And the light form section 
and attachment stakes to support or to form the concrete if necessary. And a gang board just behind the profile pan from which, if necessary, finishing correction, corrections can be made. Yes, yeah, some, some example of situations uh, in which a mobile pedestrian bridge is very necessary to solve surface problems. The quality of the runways for the tracks of the paving equipment is undoubtedly one of the most important factors that contribute to the realization of a smooth pavement surface. And uh, the following criteria have to be met. Minimal width of 80 centimeters, a sufficient bearing capacity, uh, good skid resistance, no slip, especially when paving on a slope, a good evenness to avoid that the self-leveling systems have to compensate for excessive differences in height and be free of, of obstacles and have enough spaces for places the sensor lines. Placing guide wires, the following recommendations apply. A sufficient lateral stability, and especially if the road uh, structure is located on an embankment, only use the stakes with adjustable arm, maximum spaces of seven meters between the line support stakes, avoid deformation, in the profile of the pavement surface by adjusting the tension in the string line in such a way that the line is uh, sagging as little as possible and uh, take care of uh, temperature fluctuation and uh, permanently check the setting of the string lines. Slip from concrete paving machine guidance and elevation have always be, been controlled by one of two string lines. The use of stringless paving controlled by global positioning system and uh, laser technologies is a modern and very efficient option. Uh, Mr. Raymond, uh, thanks for uh, your presentation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, in the beginning of presentation, uh, you mentioned that the uh, ratio, uh, the concrete payment uh, in rural region is uh, 60 percentage, but in motorway, 35 percentage about. It is uh, very interested uh, why uh, it is the high in the rural region. Uh, and is it uh, RCC concrete in rural region? I mean, more economic because of that or... Uh, why it is preferable in rural region? The percentage is high. Percentage. Well, we have made a lot of experiment in the percentage of steel reinforcement in CRCP. No. No, in rural region, uh, the concrete payment. The concrete. Oh, yes. uh, but we have, uh, I think, uh, the two of three cemeteries in Belgium. We have quarries. And I think in the beginning of the uh, the construction of uh, highways, uh, the ministry, the government has decided uh, to, to have a part for the asphalt industry, to have a part for the cement industry, uh, to have the, the progress of the economy in the construction. Okay. Yes, Matt. Uh, yes. Thank you.